friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I have such a fun and festive video for you all. So I have put up a few of the Christmas slash winter decor pieces that I own and we've got the diffusers going with cinnamon and cypress and the house smells so cozy and feels so warm with all of the little twinkle lights. And today I'm going to be sharing with you a few treats for over the holidays, really just to enjoy with hot cocoa through the winter if you enjoy sledding or your children do. It's just always fun to have some sweet little treats around. So the first thing that I'm going to be making up is some homemade marshmallows. And in our house, we have some really big food sensitivities and recently found out how serious they really are, especially for my one daughter. So making our own homemade goodies at home like this is just the way to go for us to know that she's gonna feel her absolute best. So to make homemade marshmallows, it's actually really simple. I'm relatively new to doing this and didn't realize how easy it actually is. So I'm just sifting together some powdered sugar and a little bit of cornstarch. You'll use this later on to help the marshmallows not stick together. You're gonna start out with some really hot water. I like to use my tea kettle for this. And I feel like every time I show this tea kettle in a video, everybody wants to know where it's from. My husband actually got it for me for Christmas last year and it is off of Amazon and I can link it below if you are interested or maybe you wanna get it for Christmas for someone else in your life. So really marshmallows are made with gelatin and some sugar and I'm just using some organic cane sugar and also whatever you wanna flavor it with for a more traditional marshmallow flavor you're gonna go with vanilla and that's what I did this time however I think the next batch I make I'm going to make peppermint I just think it would be so delicious in hot chocolate so you're going to heat up the sugar and water mixture and I actually like to use a thermometer for this I will leave the recipe link below that I follow for these Again, incredibly simple, although they do take some time to sit and you'll want them to sit overnight um, once you have them mixed up. So if you're planning to use them the day after you make them, you might want to plan that extra time that they need to sit to really set up and get that nice fluffy marshmallowy texture. Once I lined my dish here, I just took some of that powdered mixture and shook it over the dish. And one of the keys to making homemade marshmallows is to use a mixer. I really don't know if it would be successful hand whisking it. If you've ever made marshmallows by hand whisking them, let me know in the comments. But I just use my stand up mixer. It is a brand off of Amazon that's very inexpensive. I would highly recommend it. I've had mine for quite a while and the price is an absolute fraction of a KitchenAid. So if you're looking for a good mixer that has a nice big bowl, um, you may wanna check that out. So I'm just spreading the marshmallow type fluff into that bowl or dish, lined dish, and I'm gonna go ahead and just set that aside until the next day. Before I share too much about the next recipe, I wanted to tell you all that today's video I am collabing with Kiri. I enjoy her channel so much. I'm gonna let her introduce herself and tell you a little bit about her content, but definitely when you're finished here, you're gonna wanna check out her channel link below. Hi, I'm Kiri with Healthfully Rooted Home, and I'm so excited for this opportunity to collaborate with Adeline on this video. I'm a wife, mother, and full-time homemaker, and I love sharing about healthy homemaking, meal planning, cooking from scratch, and home management routines. It's my desire to help women develop a passion for their role in the home as I share how I intentionally make our house a home. My channel is a place for you to light a candle, 
curl up with a warm cup of coffee or tea in your favorite mug and get inspired about homemaking in a way that honors the Lord. My prayer is that you get a few sweet little mementos every time you watch my channel. Consider them little blessings from my house to yours. When you're finished watching Adeline's video, I'd be delighted if you'd stop by my channel to say hello. I'm sharing a similar video on how to make holiday cookies in advance so that you can enjoy them all throughout the season. Thanks again to Adeline for partnering with me on this video. I love her channel. It brings me so much joy as she shares her heart and homemaking. Okay, now back to baking. This recipe involves using oat flour. I have shared this not that long ago how to make oat flour you just take some oatmeal rolled oats I think you could probably use any type of oatmeal put it in your blender and blend it into a flour it's so incredibly simple and through the holiday season if you have friends or family members that need some gluten-free style recipes for your gatherings and you're the one making them this is a good way for you to be able to make a gluten-free recipe now if someone has a gluten allergy you might want to check with them if they are able to have oat flour made from regular oats or do they need to be a certified gluten-free oat because sometimes oats are tossed in flour to help them not stick together so you might want to investigate that, but if the person is okay with using regular oats, then you don't have to buy any special ingredients to make oat flour. So these cookies, I am so excited to share with you. I'm mixing up the dough to let it chill while I mix up the next cookie dough recipe, and we'll get back to this, but it is an oat flour cutout cookie that turns out incredible so we'll get back to that here in a moment in the meantime we're gonna mix up another oatmeal cookie recipe this is so delicious it has just a couple ingredients that you probably have in your house and again could be gluten-free friendly depending on if the oats have to be certified gluten-free for that person. So if you are taking things to a family gathering and you want to make sure that you've got some kind of option for someone there that has um, a gluten sensitivity, this could be a recipe for you without having to go to the store for any special ingredients. Again, I will leave this recipe typed out in the description box, but essentially it is some brown sugar, regular sugar, I think it's got some baking soda, it's got eggs, butter, and your rolled oats, and then finishing off with chocolate chips. And these are so addicting, they're so delicious. I feel like they're just the perfect cookie to go along with a cold winter day. They have that hearty, oatmeal in them that fills up your belly a little bit and I know that my children really enjoy these. So one little note I will make about this recipe is you do want to take your hands and slightly flatten the cookie dough balls before you put them in the oven. They're not going to really flatten out themselves so taking the time to smash them out a little bit before you bake them will give them more of that cookie shape. So this project is something that I have been wanting to do for quite some time and this day was a perfect opportunity to do it. And that is I took some of my raw cane sugar and I found these food colorings on Amazon. Again, I'll leave them linked below, but they are actually made with fruit and vegetable juice. Um, that's where the coloring comes from and as we were actually using these sprinkles later on with the cutout cookies my daughters were trying to guess what fruits or vegetables could potentially make that color of sprinkles so that was kind of a fun subject and we've been talking a lot about um, why we want to avoid a lot of food colorings um, they just are not good for us and in a lot of other countries besides the US they actually can't even sell things with some of the colorings that we use here so that's one thing um, that I've been really trying to do so along with Christmas cookies and besides I'm gonna say the colors that these came out to be and how they looked on the sugar cookies I thought they looked so much more appetizing <laughs> and really just precious because they were more of a pastel 
looking sprinkle as you'll see here after a bit. So we got the cookie cutters out and we even got some really tiny miniature cookie cutters from Walmart um, this year. I think they were like $2 or something like that. And once I had let the cutout cookie dough cool for quite some time, I used my very heavy rolling pin with some parchment paper to roll it all out to about a quarter inch. And I just can't explain how good these cookies are. They have a almond extract in them and the flavoring is just so delicious. They have the best texture. That was one thing I was a little bit curious to see how the texture would turn out. And the texture was so good. If you kind of think of the iced oatmeal cookies that you buy in a package from the store, you know how they have a bit of a chew to them? That's a little bit how these cutout cookies taste or feel when you bite into them. They have just a little bit of that chewy texture like oatmeal often brings. And I just think it adds to the almond flavoring and the girls have been really enjoying these. And of course, it's just fun that my daughter that cannot have um, gluten can enjoy these um, and she doesn't feel excluded at all. So once the cookies were out of the oven, we were ready to start decorating. I didn't film a whole lot of the decorating process simply because you know how it is when you're decorating cookies with three children. It can be a little bit interesting and I just wanted to enjoy the moment. It just was so special and so much fun to decorate with them but they enjoyed this a lot. And honestly, I think we'll probably do another round of sugar cookies like this before Christmas so that we have some over the holidays, especially to take along for my daughter to family events. Okay, so once the marshmallows had sat overnight, you're gonna see how they have sat up. And you wanna be really liberal with the powdered sugar mixture and just kind of coat and fluff that over everything as you're cutting them out. It just helps a lot to be able to keep the marshmallows from sticking to each other. And I wanted a good size to put into hot chocolate. I think if I were to make these to say make s'mores or something like that, I probably would double this recipe so that the marshmallows would be a lot thicker and we would be able to put them on roasting sticks or something like that to roast over a fire. But because I was kind of going for more of like a mini marshmallow size for in a mug of hot chocolate, this was just fine. And they still were nice and fluffy. And I just took a pizza cutter and cut through them all and they, are just so delicious. I think it helps so much whenever you use a pure vanilla extract that you know is of good quality, you really get that delicious vanilla flavor in the marshmallows. And then I just took some extra powder and tossed them kind of all around in the powder so that they wouldn't stick to each other. And I'm going to just store these in an airtight container. You could probably store them on the counter. I feel like because they are just essentially gelatin and sugar, <laughs> I don't think that it would matter to store them on, a, on the counter like you would chocolate chip cookies in a container or something like that. But I figured we will be using these over the next little while whenever we have hot chocolate, which is not necessarily every day. So I decided to just put them in an airtight container in the refrigerator and store them that way so that they have a little bit of a longer shelf life for me. And my daughters were having fun test tasting these as well. I think that just the possibility of making a lot of different flavors or even colors, if you add in some of that food coloring that I was showing you, you could make some really fun marshmallows. Okay, so this is a very traditional treat in my family and in my husband's family, and that is Buckeyes. And I know there might be different names for this treat, so let me know in the comments what you guys would call this, or simply let me know what are some of your traditional family treats 
during the holidays that you like to make every year, or maybe your mom or grandmother made them. I think it's such a fun topic to discuss. So what I am doing is mixing some peanut butter, some butter, some Rice Krispies, and some powdered sugar. My preferred powdered sugar is the powdered cane sugar that Azure Standard carries. Um, I just know then it hasn't been bleached, but you just mix it all together to create a dough. You form the size balls that you would like to bite into, whatever size you think is good. Some people make them bigger, some people make them a little bit smaller, and I put them into the refrigerator or the freezer to get them really, really cold so they hold together during the chocolate dipping process. So here I made myself a little double broiler and I just put one of my glass mixing bowls on top of a saucepan and I put some dark chocolate chips. I like to use unsweetened peanut butter with this and dark chocolate chips. I feel like the unsweetened peanut butter helps to balance out the powdered sugar and makes them not overkill sweet. And then the dark chocolate also helps to balance out the sweetness of the peanut butter rice crispy part. And actually, I don't think I mentioned I used a chunky peanut butter for this. I think it just adds to the texture and makes it more crunchy when you get to bite into the center of it. These are just absolutely delicious. We enjoy these so much. And I like to use a little skewer to help kind of get the whole thing covered in chocolate. Don't forget to check out Kiri's video. I know she has some fantastic ideas for you all. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for spending some time with me today. I hope that you got inspired and I hope you all have a great week.